Hi. Today we will see the process involved in sending third-party events, with custom event class and custom slots to BMC Helix Operations Management. The objective of this video is to learn how to create a custom class, create new slots under the custom class, and then configure a third-party application, to send events to BMC Helix Operations Management with the new slot details. In this demo, we are using Nagios as our third-party application. And, we have created a script that we will use to run the APIs for creating the custom class and slots. We will run these APIs by using curl commands. Let's begin. We will be creating a custom class Nagios underscore event, and associated slots Nagios underscore custom 1 and Nagios underscore custom 2. As you can see, we already have a script. We'll run each of these files as we progress through our process. Our first step is to get the JSON web token or the JWT. This token is required for identifying the tenant details. You can get the JWT by running the appropriate REST API. To know more, let's look at the BMC Helix Operations Management documentation. This page describes all the APIs available for event operations. When you click the link at the top, you will find information about obtaining the JWT. We have already obtained a valid JWT. Note that the JWT remains valid for 15 minutes only. Our next step is to create the custom class and the associated new slots. Creating the custom class is a one-time activity. We already have this file with the necessary parameter details. You can see that the JWT, the custom class and the custom slots are already updated. In the attributes section, the name parameter refers to the slot name, and, data type refers to the data type you want to assign to the new slot. You can add this expression as many times as you want to add new slots. Let's run the script. You see the message that says event class created successfully. Let's reconfirm that the new slot is created. Our next step is to run the list API to get the custom class and associated slot details. In this file, we have already updated the load balancer name and the JWT. We will now add other details. Identifier tells you the actual class name or the unique class ID by which you want to get details. The ID type indicates the type of input you are providing, ID or name. We will get details by the event class name. Let's run the script. You can see the slot details associated with our custom class. The next step is to send events to BMC Helix Operations Management. For this, we need to run the event ingestion API. In the sendEvents.sh file, you can update the necessary parameter values to manually send a single event, or even multiple events. But, each time, you need to manually run the API with the correct parameter values. However, instead of this manual process, we will configure our third-party application Nagios to run the event ingestion API. Suppose you want to configure Nagios to send an event to BMC Helix Operations Management if a host goes down. To do this, on the Nagios setup, let's go to the location of the object configuration files. We have already defined an object configuration file, device underscore monitor dot cfg. In this file, we have defined the host to be monitored, www.facebook.com, and two commands, one to check if the host is up and running and the other to check the HTTP service. A maximum of two attempts will be made to check if the host is up. If the host goes down, the inform underscore TS handler will call the script to send events to BMC Helix Operations Management. The next step, is to define the name and location of the script, and the parameters or slots that must be updated while sending the event. For this, we need to go to the commands.cfg file. Inform underscore TS is the command name, and send underscore events dot sh is the script name. You can see that the script location, and the necessary parameters that must be updated while sending the event, are already added. Note the parameters that are mandatory for sending an event. Let's go to the script location and check the script file. When the script is called, it will in turn run this event ingestion API. Now we come to the final step. In the nagios.cfg file, we need to define the location of the object configuration file that we created earlier. You can see that this is already done. This completes our configuration process. Now, if the host being monitored goes down, an event will automatically be sent to BMC Helix Operations Management. 
For the purpose of this demo, we have temporarily disconnected the host, so that we can verify if the event is automatically sent. You can see that the event shows up on the Nagios console. Now, let's check on the Helix Operations Management console. You can see that the Nagios event was successfully sent. In the event details, you can see the custom class name and the custom slots. This completes the process of sending third-party events with custom class details to BMC Helix Operations Management. To view the BMC Helix Operations Management documentation, see docs.bmc.com/docs/helixoperationsmanagement. Thanks for watching.